Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, once again, this is Santos Capillon Jr. Wishing you always a good day. Okay, now uh, today, uh, what I'm going to do is to show you how are you going to write the script programming for the twin exhaust fan. Now, in my previous tutorial, I have done one uh, FB or functional block programming, a very simple one. Then today, what I'm going to do is to create the counterpart of that program in script programming, okay? So there are two ways in doing uh, control logic program in this uh, application or in this system. Now, first, functional block, I have already showed you. Then the next one is the script programming, okay? Now, in functional block, we are using blocks, okay? So you will just connect the uh, inputs and outputs of the block to another block, okay? Then use some uh, logical gates to do the processing, okay? Now, in script programming, it is uh, you will be writing the script, how the program will uh, be controlled or how the equipment will be controlled, okay? Now, uh, let me start it. Now, I have here my project configuration uh, offline. Uh, open already. Now I have created in advance the uh, script programming. Now I will show you how are you going to create. Now from your folder, no, okay, now uh, in doing a project, you should create your folder for a specific equipment. For this uh, exhaust fan, I have created the folder for twin exhaust fan and all the related uh, graphics and control program, I can put it there or I can dump it in that folder or you can create another folder for all the programs, okay? Now, uh, again, uh, before you do the programming, uh, when you do the control logic program, sometimes your control logic program will be very, uh, will become complicated, okay? Because you can write uh, one program, one FB uh, functional block programming for the entire control of the equipment. Now it might uh, become a very complicated uh, control logic. Now what I'm doing in my project, I'm writing, so this, con uh, this big uh, complicated program, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to divide it into several small, uh, small program that is easy to understand, okay? Because uh, if you are a new programmer, sometimes, it will be very difficult to trace what is happening in your program because it's, uh, it's a little bit complicated. So what I'm doing, let's say I will create one small program for just starting the fans. Then I will create another program for just monitoring the run hours. Then I will create another program uh, for, the, for raising all the alarms such as uh, maintenance alarm, runtime alarm, and so on, okay? Now, for this tutorial, I'm doing one uh, complete uh, program. I'm not dividing it, but later on, we might be able to do the breaking of a big program. Okay. Now, so let me show you how are you going to create a script program. So right click on your folder, then new, then select the program. Again, as I said, functional block program or script program. So this time you will just select script program and uh, specify a descriptive uh, file name, okay? Then you can always do the uh, description. Then for the path, it will be automatically uh, provided to you by the software, okay? So this is how you do it. It's very simple, just create, then it will be uh, created in your folder, okay? So I don't think we need to create another one. I have here this one. Now, this is the twin, ex uh, twin exhaust fan script program, okay? So this is the program. Let me edit it for you. Okay. So it will bring me to my uh, script editor. Okay. So let me stop the share. Make sure the make sure the screen is okay. No. Okay. Uh, so how are you going to write it? Okay. Let me put it. Here somewhere. Okay. Let me put it here. Okay. Now uh, let me walk you through with this script program. Okay. Now the first uh, few lines, as you can see, these are each line are numbered. Okay. Now uh, the first few lines. 
Okay. So numeric input uh, in your uh, FB functional back programming, we have, the, I, I, as I said, there will be inputs, processing, then output. Okay. So in the script, first you need to define your inputs. So these are all the inputs. EF1 hand of auto status, EF1 trip status, EF1 run status, EF1 airflow status, okay? The same in my FBD programming. Then EF2 hand of auto status, trip, okay? So these are all the inputs. So these are the inputs or the monitoring points for the exhaust fan. Then we have here the numeric output as the same, likewise in my uh, FB programming, there are only two outputs, the EF1 status sub command and EF2 status sub command. Okay. Now here, I have specified a line here in line eight, EF op. Okay. So EF op meaning uh, this is the, okay, let me explain first this one. As you can see here, the flow type is looping. Okay. So looping meaning I have one loop here, EF1, uh, EF off, meaning exhaust span are off, okay? So exhaust span are off. If you are in this loop, so this will be the uh, conditions that my, uh, my DDC needs to check, okay? So EF off, what are the condition? The EF1, and EF2 should be off, okay? So this is the starting point. So when you uploaded this program to your DDC, so it will start here, okay? So it will just stay in this loop, okay? Then it will just scan these few lines from nine to 13. So it will just scan these few lines, okay? Then it will keep on executing this, okay? So EF1 is off, EF2 is off, then it will check this. EF1, if EF1 is hand of auto, hand of auto is true and not trip and not par alarm and op enabled. Okay, uh, I have included here one uh, software points. OP enable is the operator enable. Okay, but disregard this one. Uh, later on, I will try to explain this uh, in the next tutorial. Okay, so the condition that the program or the our DDC is checking if EF1 hand of auto status is true and not meaning there is no trip and not meaning there is no fire alarm and the operator enable this one is I will show you this in the BMS graphics okay so this is a software point okay then Go to EF1 on. So meaning you have to jump or go out of this loop, then you will go to the EF1 loop. Okay, so here, so the, from here, it will jump to this one because this condition is met, then it will go to EF1 on. Okay, so what will happen in the EF1 on? So again, so the first line of instruction is to turn on EF1, okay? So it will turn on the exhaust one number one, okay? Then exhaust one number two is off. Then there are, there will be several conditions here. So if EF2 hand of auto status, meaning uh, the EF2 is in auto, auto position and there is no trip in EF2 and no fire alarm and EF1 trips. So meaning uh, the control is here in this uh, loop. If EF1 trips, if this condition is true, then your control will move to EF2 on. So what is the EF2 on? Okay, it will come here. Okay. So the only the condition that your control will go out of this loop, EF1 on, if EF1 trips. So it will go to this loop. Okay, so then EF2 on. So it will turn on the EF2, then it will turn off EF2 because it already tripped. So it will, our program will remove the uh, command, okay? Then again, there will be several condition here. If EF hand of auto and EF2 trips, then go to EF1, 
Okay, so it will go back here again. Now, assuming that the problem in EF1 is already cleared. Okay, so this is a very uh, simple programming logic, but again, this is not the final program for this EF2 uh, for this twin exhaust fan. I'm just showing you how are you going to prepare the program. Okay, so let me break it down. First, you will be having the physical points. Now, the physical points are this, except for the OP enable EF status. This is software points, okay? Now, so you, have, you will define your numeric inputs, okay? As you can see here, then define your numeric output. Okay, once it is defined, then be, be, be very careful in defining or using the uh, identifier, okay? Because you, you are not allowed to use some uh, special characters like, like slash, uh, asterisk, and so on, okay? Then you have to define your control loop. First loop is two fans are off. Then it will check for some condition so it can move to another loop. Let's say for this one, when it, both fans are off, this is the starting point. Then it will check what are the conditions here in if uh, one condition is met, then if there is an instruction to go to the another loop, then it will go there. Okay, let's say this line, line 11 is true or met, the conditions are all met, then it will go to go to EF1 on. So it will go come here from this uh, loop, okay? So EF1, it will start now the uh, EF1, okay, again, it will stay in this loop, then it will check all the conditions here, okay, it will keep on scanning this loop, then when this condition is true, then it will go to the next loop, whatever is the go to instruction here, okay, so it will come here, then do all the instruction here, so it will stay here, okay, then if the condition is met, then it will go to the uh, loop, wherever the program is directed to go. Okay, this is a simple script programming, but this is not the complete program for the script uh, program of the twin exhaust fan. I'm just showing you how are you going to write your script program, okay? So I hope you have already an idea how are you going to write the script program. In this case, you will be the one typing the uh, line of instruction sequentially then uh, based on the sequence of operation, you have to write your control logic program. By the way, uh, in writing your control logic program or computer program, you have to uh, follow some development cycle. Okay, first, uh, know the problem. So know the problem, you will be able to know the problem by acquiring the approved sequence of operation. Then next step is plan the logic. Okay, you will try to plan your logic like what I'm showing you here or the algorithm. Then once you plan the logic, you can write the code. So you are writing now the code. First step, define all your input and output points. Then define each loop for the control of the equipment. So first loop, all the, the, the both fans are off. Then you will check what is the condition that EF1 will run. Okay, so if it is met, it will go to the loop for EF1 on. Okay, so it will stay there. Then it will just check whatever is the condition here. Then if one condition is met, then it will go to the next uh, loop wherever this uh, instruction is directing the control. Okay, so it will go. If this instruction is uh, met or the conditions are met, then it will go to EF2 on, okay? Then it will stay here, okay? Then it will wait till one uh, instruction, the conditions are met, then it will go or it will jump to another loop, okay? So uh, here, just like what I've show you, shown you in my previous tutorial, uh, how are you going to configure it or do the reference, okay? So here, the basic, now, as you can see here, compilation valid, meaning there is no problem in my uh, 
uh, program. So to know if there is problem, you need to save it. Okay. So if it is saved properly, then you can see compilation valid. If there is no syntax error here, then compilation will be valid. Okay. Then it is already enabled. Okay. Then the flow type is looping. As I said, it will stay in one loop. One, if the condition in the loop is met, then it will jump to another loop. Okay. Now uh, advanced, there is no, uh, okay, this is only leave it. Now the inputs, again, I have shown you how are you going to configure the input. So for the sake of uh, configuring it, EF1 hand of auto status, I will show you how to do it. Again, as you can see here, okay, now you have to just select this reference. You have to configure the reference. Okay, then it will bring you to your system, okay? Then you will go to your IO bus. Then what is that one? EF1. Uh, okay, let me cancel. EF1 hand of auto status. So you will go, you will be directed to your system. Okay, then you have to go to your IO module. Then EF1 hand of auto status. So this one, again, you have to select the value, then select. Okay, the meaning this. Is already uh, you already configure the reference, okay? Or you binded already the control program input point to physical I/O module point, okay? So I don't think I have to show you one by one how are you going to do that one, okay? Now uh, the output point, okay? Let's try this one. So the output point you cannot do it here. Also, we will do it in the system, okay? I will show you later. Okay, this is the same uh, with my previous tutorial when I configure the input and output points of functional black, functional black programming. Okay, so guys, uh, I have shown you already functional black programming, then script programming. Okay, so I do hope uh, I have given you an idea how to prepare a script program for a specific equipment. Okay, now. Uh, when you see there is asterisk here, meaning it is not yet saved, let's save it. Okay, so meaning it is saved already, then you have to check if the compilation is valid. Okay, true. Okay, now you can uh, go back to the offline configuration of your system to check it there. Okay, so once again, uh, guys, thank you very much for watching this short video clip. And I do hope you ha I have given you an idea how to write your script program or the counterpart script program for our functional block programming. Then you have to choose uh, if you feel comfortable in functional block programming or if you are comfortable with script programming, you can choose where to write your control logic program. But I guess functional block is uh, a little bit uh, easy to understand because you are seeing some uh, some objects like the blocks, then you are just connecting the input and output. Here, you in script, you will be the one to write and type all these conditions and make sure you are following the syntax of the uh, this uh, script editor programming. Okay, so again, Santos Cabellan Jr. saying, God bless us all and bye for now.